Hey everyone, and welcome back to Firewood Sparkler. If you're new here, I'm Norali, and I craft, talk about writing, music, and all sorts of other things on this channel. So today I am going to talk about a uh, somewhat contentious topic, um, but I just want to start with some disclaimers. I don't believe in telling other people what to do. I think it's a bit of a non-starter and only serves to make people really resentful of you. I have had trouble with that in the past and I have learned to not do that. So in this video, I am not going to be telling you what to do and I'm also not going to be telling you that you're doing anything right or wrong. I am only going to present the information I have and what I do with that information. This video is also not medical advice. I am not a doctor of anything, and I am only describing my own experiences. I also want to acknowledge the privilege I have when I'm talking about this stuff. I'm able to afford a lot of items in this video that I know people aren't, and I'm in a work environment that respects my boundaries, and I'm able-bodied enough to do some things that I know a lot of people aren't able to do. I am a strong believer in disability justice and in making everything as accessible as possible, so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make the information I have accessible. If that is helpful to you, that's great. If not, uh, here's another video you can check out. It's in one of these corners that I hope you'll enjoy. And I also will have sources to everything I can source linked in the description and in the pinned comment. I think I'm going to make a Google Doc uh, link that anyone can look at. That will be in the description and the pinned comment with links to everything I can possibly link. So, COVID. Um, as of filming, it's 2024. It is August 2024, and according to some people, this disease has become a non-issue for at least the last two years. Um, however, a lot of people continue to get it. Right now, it's the Olympics, and it is spreading like wildfire there. It is spreading like wildfire in the United States, and we are currently in a major surge. I know a bunch of people who have gotten COVID recently personally, and I got a second COVID infection less than a year ago, which is why I am continuing to take precautions. COVID continues to create long-term issues for the more vulnerable, um, and if you've had it before, there is a high likelihood that if you get it again, you'll have long-term issues. Um, and honestly, we have been living with COVID for a relatively short amount of time. We don't know all of the long-term effects. Long COVID is extremely under-researched. And all I know is that I don't want to get it. So I don't want to get COVID again. Um, and here is what I have that kind of lessens my chances of having COVID again. So the first thing I want to talk about is vaccines. About every six months, I get an updated COVID vaccine because this is a virus that mutates extremely fast. I kind of treat it the same way I do the flu shot. There is usually a new strain with every season, and I just want to make sure that I am protected against the new strain. This does require some crowdsourced research, which I'll talk about later. Um, but, uh, again, this is not medical advice, but I listen to my doctor says in terms of getting vaccinated and I believe in vaccines and I think they work and I think they are part of the reason why my COVID has not been severe when I've had it. The second thing I want to talk about is air purifiers. Um, I currently own an air purifier for my apartment and I have a couple of these portable HEPA filters for when I'm not home. I take one into my office every day that I'm working from the office. Um, also, uh, I'm lucky enough to live in an apartment building where we have like individual air systems for each apartment, so I'm not afraid from getting it from my building's ventilation. Um, that's really lucky. I know not everyone has that, but a HEPA filter air purifier can do wonders. The second thing I want to talk about is masks. Um, I wear N95 or KN95 masks. This is a KN95. This is an example of NN95. This is like a relatively newer shape for me. I usually go with this kind of typical ear loop shape. Um, and if I am going to be indoors with other people or in a crowded outdoor space, I wear one. 
Um, I have a lot of fun finding masks with fun colors and designs. Um, where I used to live, we had a pharmacy downstairs, an independent pharmacy that had a ton of fun designs. And I've also linked to um, this website in the description, Mask Lab, uh, not sponsored or anything, but they have some really fun designs. And they have a slightly thinner um, mask design. Uh, so I feel like for hot days for breathability, this mask lab is really good whereas this is really good for if you want something slightly thicker and because i love the look of these masks i try to limit my waist with these i switch off between masks about once a week and i actually boil my dirty masks in order to preserve and keep using them um i'll link this study below i read on boiling masks to sanitize them a lot of people just rotate out their masks between reuse um which is also proven to keep masks free of COVID. Um, there's research recently that I saw that uh, even one hour after a mask has been in contact with COVID, it is free of COVID. And I know uh, with boiling masks, uh, people have a lot of concerns about getting masks wet, but um, based on the research I've read, um, getting a mask wet has a very limited effect on the electrostatic um function that the masks has once it's dry um so that's the research uh again i'll link all the research down below my masks have lasted me a long time um and but i do get new ones when something is like very physically dirty um i toss those the ones that are physically dirty and i toss ones where the ear loops are too loose or have broken off obviously um so that's kind of how i do masks um Oh, let me grab this thing. I'm back. Um, so Covixil is this little nasal spray. Um, the jury is out on this one still, but I used this nasal spray um, recently, uh, right before and after some flights that I had to take in order to avoid getting COVID in addition to having my face mask and my air purifier, which by the way, I've never had an issue taking my air purifier on a plane. And you know, so far so good. I haven't gotten a COVID infection from uh, being on an airplane. There is some research that shows that uh, it does reduce the chances of getting infected. However, it isn't FDA approved. So, um, you know, again, disclaimer, not medical advice. I'm just describing my experiences. And this is something that um, has kind of been one of those crowdsourced people swear by it kind of things that I'm trying out and you know it hasn't done me any harm so there you go so I know this sounds like ha a lot of things to have and it's because of this idea of layers of protection that I really believe in um, while I have my mask on for the majority of the day while I'm in the office I do push it down to have sips of water and my coffee um, and that's where having my HEPA filter is great. It actively cleans the air of pathogens and lessens my risk when I do need to take off my mask. Um, and like, again, uh, I know that flight travel is one of the riskier things I do. So when I do so, I double mask um, to double that layer of protection and also have my HEPA filter and, you know, this nasal spray just in case, you know, the filter runs out of battery or the plug on the plane doesn't work. Um, there are any number of things that could go wrong and, you know, I was a Girl Scout, always be prepared. And the final thing I want to talk about that I have are tests. So um, I went a little nuts when the US government was sending people free COVID tests. Um, and I am now really lucky to have a little bit of a stockpile uh, when I know a lot of people don't have access to free tests anymore. I try to spread out my use of them. I only test when I'm about to do something higher risk and after i've done something relatively high risk yeah testing is really important um i know that the over-the-counter tests that are available aren't you know the most accurate things in the world all the time but if you are symptomatic it's really a peace of mind to have a, a positive or a negative test just some confirmation of what is going on with you um and you know they are accurate to an extent it's just not the most accurate testing system in the world compared to PCR testing, which needs to happen in a lab and is uh, very much not highly available at the moment. Um, I wish that it was and I wish it was still covered by insurance, but it is not. So it costs a lot more money. And that is something that I 
don't have as much access to at the moment, unfortunately. The next thing I kind of want to talk about uh, is uh, the things I do. Um, a lot of people think of being COVID safe as kind of limiting your life in some ways. And uh, that's not true at all. Um, and I kind of want to talk about some of the things I do to maintain COVID safety while still having a life. Um, so one of the first things I did when uh, moving to a new city was join my local COVID cautious Facebook group. Um, they have a wealth of resources like advice on what to do if you have COVID, um, local shops that require masks, which is amazing, um, restaurants that have outdoor seating, if that's something you're comfortable with, and um, like this is the most important thing, doctor's offices that have good air quality and respect your mask boundaries. Um, I also joined the local queer version of that, um, which allowed me to go to this incredible evening under the northern lights uh, that was full of games and dancing and everyone was masked. There was outdoor space for people to hang out. There were HEPA filters inside and they even had these far UVC lamps to keep everyone safe. I have made friends and kept friends with people who have similar boundaries to me or are willing to accept my boundaries and meet me where I'm at. Um, this sometimes has been a difficult experience, but for the people that are willing to put in some effort, it has been incredible and it's really validated those friendships and made them more meaningful to me. Um, and uh, the last thing I want to talk about uh, in terms of locally, um, if you live in or near a major city, there are mask blocks that distribute free resources and PPE-like masks. Another thing I do is research. Um, my version of research tends to be almost passive. I follow organizations that back up their facts with research and I look into the sources of their claims before I use them to facilitate my decision making. The beauty of social media is that I don't really have to go out of my way to find out the facts once I've found the people and organizations who are looking into the facts for themselves. Um, that's not to say that I don't read research, um, but I allow the research to find me. I see charts on Twitter and Instagram maybe, and then I find the sources of those charts and read about the conclusions they make and learn that way. I don't go out of my way to, you know, go into a rabbit hole because honestly, that will give me more anxiety than I need in my life. I also just keep an eye on numbers. If COVID numbers are getting high, um, I will do fewer risky things like getting on planes or doing outdoor seating at restaurants. If numbers are low, while I do know that there's still some risk involved, I feel freer to socialize and spend time in public places with you know, all of my precautions in place. Another thing I do is organize. Uh, I, I don't do as much of this, admittedly, but I do join the organizers in everything they do. For example, I have joined calls to criticize mask bans, which are not only harmful to public health, but is also a protest suppression tactic uh, that came about due to the encampments for Gaza. And I listen to organizers online and in my community that are doing good work and putting out calls for help and I donate where I can. I highly, highly recommend following disability organizers and people who are uh, loud about disability justice because they are the ones um, who have been talking about COVID the longest, who have been taking it seriously for the longest, and who probably have the information that you need and are looking for for your decision making. For many immunocompromised people, the internet is where you go to find community and to organize and advocate for yourself. And I take my cues from the leaders in those communities. So the last thing I really do is take care of my mental health. It takes a lot of mental energy to say no to things that in a world without COVID, I would absolutely say yes to. Um, it sucks. Um, it takes a lot of energy for me to explain my boundaries to people who do not or refuse to understand. Um, so a lot of what I do is I protect my energy for the people that matter most to me. 
I will prioritize people who have the same priorities as me. And when someone I care about does not, I will make an effort to find an activity that doesn't require my strictest COVID precautions. I love a good walk in the park, and I know most of my friends do too. And that is something that I feel like I can do safely with people who are not taking as many precautions as I am. A lot of people are in denial about how serious COVID is because confronting the fact that COVID is still a problem means confronting the fact that you may have done something wrong. It also means that you have to confront the reality that millions of people have died from COVID since 2020 and that millions of people continue to suffer from the long-term effects of long COVID. And that's a really hard reality to live in. Um, I have had COVID twice now, and I have had to have really hard conversations with myself to figure out how to deal with the things that I did wrong that I could do better. And um, those conversations are worth it. Part of protecting my mental health is that is talking to those who will listen and not talking to those that won't. Um, because it can start to feel like you're being gaslit by society and I don't like feeling gaslit. <laughs> so now on to a couple of things I don't do. Um, basically the main things is that I don't eat indoors at restaurants anymore and I used to do that all the time. I am a huge foodie and it was a massive adjustment for me to stop eating indoors at restaurants um but i can still get like my foodie fix by ordering takeout and occasionally eating at restaurants with outdoor seating and learning to have fun cooking new recipes um my partner and i have been making focaccia every week and it has been wonderful and also when it's nice out i don't eat indoors when i'm going into the office i use my lunch breaks to get a little fresh air and eat outside and that's been quite nice too um and uh the other thing i really don't do that much is go out more than once a week i mean on a good week i have pretty low energy levels anyway so i probably would have done this uh but I try not to overbook myself in terms of making plans more than once a week. Um, it can take five to 10 days for COVID symptoms to pop up and placing a very mild limit on my social calendar both helps my mental health as like an introvert and allows me to ensure that I'm not passing COVID on to other people, which is also very helpful to my mental health. <laughs> Um, I live a very full life and I am so lucky to have this life and I don't want to expose anyone else to harm just because I'd like to do something fun when I could potentially be getting people sick. And at the end of the day, I hope this is overkill. I know this video is a lot, um, but uh, I'm okay with this being overkill. I really hope that COVID is eventually not a problem anymore and that caring for my community and protecting myself and my people doesn't have to look like this at some point. Um, but I would so much rather be going too far in the direction of doing the right thing than uh, to give into this like COVID is inevitable nihilism when it can completely disable yourself or someone you love. I hope this was a helpful video to you, uh, but that is it for this video. Just a little chat about what I do to protect myself and uh, the people around me from COVID. Uh, I will link everything, um, all of the resources in the description and in the pinned comment, uh, links to, you know, this HEPA filter, my masks, um, and also all the research that uh, I've mentioned are down below, also including people that uh, you might want to follow, uh, you know, if you don't feel like reading through every single document on the uh, COVID research website that I'm linking. I hope you are able to uh, stay safe and uh, that you have a wonderful day. Bye. Special thanks to Teresa Schmid, Kelly Otis, Ben Birdperson, Eric Svensson, and Untapped Inkwell for being my patrons. If you would like to support my video work or read my free weekly newsletter, Media Mondays, head on over to patreon.com slash fireworksparkler.